Welcome to Medicinavio. In this video, we will be discussing about Neisseria gonorrhea, which is responsible for gonorrhea, a sexually transmitted infection. Neisseria gonorrhea is also called gonococcus. It's a kidney-shaped diplococcus, which means it exists in pairs. It is non-capsulated, gram-negative bacteria, which means it doesn't take up gram stain at all. Now, we will be discussing about the virulence factors or the pathogenicity of Neisseria gonorrhea. It contains pili or fimbriae, which helps in adhesion to host cells and prevents phagocytosis of the bacteria. There are porins, which are just transmembrane channels across the gonococcal surface and helps in the exchange of molecules. There is opacity associated protein or protein 2 helps in adhesion to neutrophils and other gonococci. There is IgA protease which protects the gonococcus from the action of mucosal IgA antibody. IgA protease actually breaks down the IgA antibody in the mucus and is responsible for the invasive nature. There is lipooligosaccharide, a modified lipopolysaccharide, which has endotoxin activity. There is lactoferrin binding and transferrin binding proteins for uptake of iron. Now we'll be discussing about the clinical manifestations caused by gonorrhea. In males, it can cause acute urethritis or inflammation of the urethra. Epididymitis or inflammation of the epididymis, prostatitis or inflammation of the prostate gland, and palantitis or inflammation of the tip of the penis and foreskin of the penis, mostly in uncircumcised men. There is another complication called water can perineum, which occurs if the infection spreads to periurethral tissue, meaning if the infection spreads from the urethra to the surrounding tissue, it can cause this abscess with sinus formation. Now we'll be discussing about the clinical manifestations in females. In females, it can cause mucopurulent cervicitis, which is the most common presentation. It can also cause vulvovaginitis. It can also cause fitz curtis syndrome, which is characterized by peritonitis and perihepatic inflammation. It can also cause premature delivery and choriamnionitis and sepsis in infants. In both the sexes, it can cause anorectal gonorrhea spread by anal sex, pharyngeal gonorrhea spread by orogenital sex, and it can also cause ocular gonorrhea or infection of gonococcus in the eyes. In neonates, it can cause ophthalmia neonatorum, which is a very severe complication and characterized by purulent eye discharge within two to five days of birth. Transmission occurs during birth from colonized maternal genital flora. In HIV infected persons, it can also cause the enhanced transmission of HIV, which occurs due to increased viral shedding. Now we will be discussing about the epidemiology of gonorrhea. Number one, the host. Now, gonorrhea is exclusively a human disease and the source is mostly asymptomatic females and the transmission is by exclusively by sexual contact or from mother to baby during birth. Now, we will be discussing about the laboratory diagnosis of gonococcus. Specimen collected are the urethral swab or the cervical swab 
and the transported in Stuart's transport medium or Amy's transport medium. Now, Thayer Martin medium is a modified chocolate agar supplemented with antibiotics. It suppresses the growth of non pathogenic Neisseria and other flora and is used to cultivate gonococcus, pathogenic gonococcus specifically. Now, we will be discussing the various biochemical tests which are used to identify gonococcus. Now gonococcus is oxidase and catalase test positive and it ferments only glucose and not any other sugars. Now we will be discussing about the treatment of gonococcus infections. The drug of choice is ceftriaxone which is given intramuscularly and cefixim is given orally. Both of these are given single dose. Now that's all for today. Thank you for listening. Please like, share and subscribe to Medicine Avio for further videos. Thank you.